All right, let's go ahead and move on. Let's talk about our coordinators. Last episode, we gave you guys rundown of who we would have liked to see fill a lot of these coordinator roles. I don't think we got any of them right, <laughs> honestly, uh, looking back at it. Besides, uh, we obviously talked about Luke Getze already last podcast. Uh, I was a big fan of the hire. Uh, today, Luke Getze, he had his press conference, and I thought he did a tremendous job talking to the media, if I'm being honest. like I think he... Obviously, this is a press conference and you want to see it relate to the field. But one thing that I really appreciate, especially after watching Matt Nagy roll out the same offense for three years straight that just didn't work with completely different pieces. Um, he talked a lot about one, molding his scheme to the, to his players, but also the fact that his offense is not going to be the same every year. He One reporter, I can't remember who it was, but he kept talking to him like about his playbook. And he's like, I'm not entirely sure what you're talking about this playbook because it's going to change completely once I get a deeper look at the roster, who we have, what's their advantage, what's their disadvantages, and we're going to go from there. And he just seemed like someone like for the first time that was actually giving meaningful answers while at the same time also like saying what you want, you know, like with Matt Nagy, whenever he was talking about why the offense isn't working, he's like, well, you know, we're going to go, we're going to go home. We're going to watch the tape and, you know, we're going to talk about the whys. We're going to, and that, that's the important part is the whys. The whys are, are what's really important about football. Football is a great sport. You got to know the whys. And I was so sick of that. Uh, by the, I, did, I stopped watching his press conferences. I'll be completely honest. No, that's fair. I mean, I don't blame you on that. I think, uh, yeah, for Luke Getze, I think overall is a, a pretty strong press conference uh, if we're going to start grading his job already for the Chicago Bears. Um, I, I think, you know, what I did like, yeah, obviously what you brought up, Austin, um, he, he started out by saying it, it starts with the quarterback. I'm um, really emphasized nailing that down, nailing down the relationship with the quarterback and then building it um, with the other 10 players that are on the field. Um, so overall, I mean, that's already a, a fresh start um, for him and, and a way that I think everyone wanted him to come in and look at the offense. Um, so overall, I was I was definitely pleased to hear that. And I think, you know, pleased to hear that, you know, he wants to figure out things a little bit. I think what it opened the door for overall was that we're, this is going to change. The offense is going to not only look different schematically and he didn't want to get into schematics too much. The question was asked like, 10 times in a row in the first <laughs> the first part of the press conference and you know we're not going to learn about his scheme he needs to learn everything that's going on but ultimately what I want to say is I think it opens the door for you know also personnel changes as well I, I think we Certainly. Sh- I think we should expect a di- a different looking offense um, not only in the way that's being ran but also the players that are in it um, and if not completely this next year I think what was also opened up was just this is going to be a bit of a process I don't think we should expect any immediate results from day one. I think, you know, and we'll get into it when we talk about the defensive coordinator press conference. But I think that, you know, it's going to be something that's possibly going to take this first year to maybe fully understand and really start to to build the offensive identity. And that's going to move on from there. See, that's uh, that that's where you kind of scare me when you say something like that, because I I expect at least like us to be top 20 in offense like if we're if we're sitting at the at the very bottom like anything anything above 25 is progress i know i know but like to me (laughs) to me though from a realistic lens though like our bar is so low as bears fans and i know that you know obviously okay maybe i rephrase this team isn't gonna jump up to be a top 15 offense this coming year okay I don't. I don't think so. Immediately, I don't think that you the, really don't think there's an, there's any chance of that. I think there's a, if Justin Fields. I think Justin there's Fields a, is good. I think there's a small chance, and I expect Justin Fields to improve. And I think the offense is gonna physically look better. But I think mm-hmm. that there is a certain amount of overhauling, and I think maybe a little bit more on the defensive side of the ball. But on the offensive side of the ball, there's gonna be things that are gonna change. I mean, you can't go from yeah. Matt Nagy's offense, which I know like the Reed system and the Shanahan kind of tree. They're not like complete polar opposites, but there's mm-hmm. enough change. There's enough different emphasis yeah. on what needs to be done that at least things are going to have to change a little bit. And a lot of these players have just been playing under Nagy, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Like basically all the yeah. faces changed in his time there. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that though. I think that a realist, like a realistic expectation is like, 
if Justin Fields looks good and the offense overall is top 20, I think that's a huge success this year. Personally, I mean, I, I um, think it's a success. And I, I don't yeah. rule that. I don't, I don't rule that out of consideration either. If they dedicate a lot of resources this off season, if they go out and they sign a big name offensive lineman or two, if they go in the draft and they they look for some good wide receivers and they get a good wide receiver, I I don't think that's out of the question either. I would be like hitting the panic button though if we roll out and we're seeing. 23 points a game for the first couple of games like i i i would be in full-on panic mode if i'm being completely honest there um but ultimately i mean let's wait to see on that i'm sure we'll see a lot more in training camp i'm really interested to see how this training camp goes differently than the training camps under Nagy. um I don't know. Maybe I'm alone on this one but i just always felt like Nagy took it so easy on the players Truthfully, like I, I, I always felt like he was giving a lot of off days, rest days, stuff like that. And uh, I, I think you kind of saw that translate into sloppiness on the field. I hope that's not the case here. Yeah, I mean, I would really, I mean, with everything that's been made about the the hits and uh, all that, <laughs> I, I would think that, you know, hustle. I've heard hustle yeah. eight billion times, so I think that we're gonna be we're get gonna your see, track shoes on, exactly, boys. We're gonna be seeing they're gonna be running, <laughs> but yeah. um. It, you know, it's like first day Justin Fields tears ACL running on the track. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> but I, I want to hit <laughs> on one. Get fired immediately. <laughs> I want to hit on one thing, and then I'll get on the training camp that you brought up. I think one thing I would have liked to hear Getsy talk about a little bit more, and I understand him not wanting to get into the specifics. He said there's no specifics yet. That's fine, but I'd want to at least hear a little bit on you know rhythm wise you know especially just kind of how he expects to get this offense in rhythm and i know that's going to change with the personnel but at least a little bit of just i want to know a little bit maybe more about the identity he didn't really speak about um any of that but at the same time it's not something you can get overly worked up over as for the train oh go ahead yeah no no i was just gonna say i i kind of the one thing i was wishing and we saw more of is him talk a little bit more about his plan to develop fields. Like what, yeah. like what's going to be the strategy here? You know, it, it, I don't think any really, re- I think people are getting a little obsessed over the scheme. I think he's going to bring a good scheme, but really my biggest concern is how, how are we going to develop fields? And he didn't really, he, he's going to build a connection. You know, that's, I remember that's <laughs> what he kind of said. Like the first question had a little bit of the fields. I believe it was Mark Grody asked the question and then he was like and also you know it's just with justin and i we're gonna he's like we're gonna build a connection you know i'm gonna relate to him on that kind of level which i understand and i get and we've heard a lot of that from this coaching staff um but yeah you know i think as for the training camp man i i would expect it to be a lot higher tempo and i think that you know execution of of the plays that they're going to be running is going to be one of the top priorities I would at least hope, you know, especially if you're mm-hmm. if you're going to go out there, especially if you're Matt Eberflus and you're going to make that um, one of your principles, something that you're going to talk about at length in your opening press conference, like it, it better be a point of emphasis. And I feel that same way about Certainly. Ryan Poles as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. All right. Well, I'm just going to read off the names of the rest of the offensive staff that's been confirmed so far. First off, wide receiver coach Tyke Tolbert. This is probably, well, actually for sure the most notable name on this list he is super well respected around the nfl for the ability to develop talent uh one of the primary guys uh, that developed odell beckham jr um had a lot of different other great stints in the nfl that uh has developed he's developed a lot of quality wide receivers uh qb coach andrew janaco uh he was with the vikings last year a little bit of an unknown there this that was his first year being a qb coach um, I don't think there was he he didn't get fired or anything. Obviously, Kirk Cousins had a good year there. It's just you don't know how he's going to handle a young quarterback. Um, I think a big reason why they brought in Andrew Janako um, for QB coach is because uh, he he worked under. Uh, oh my God! Why can't I think of his name? Uh, Stefanski, oh, Kevin okay. Stefanski. Yeah, he worked under Kevin Stefanski, and or and then he also worked with. Um, uh, who who was the OC for for Vikings last year? Last year, yeah. Um, it His was, dad's it was, super knows. Um, 
the old Denver's coach's son. Yeah, um, yeah. Why am I blanking on his name? And that coach, he used to be the the Texans coach too. Dude, what the heck? Um, let me oh, look it man. up. <laughs> this looks bad. Uh, Vikings. No. Vikings OC twenty twenty one. Keep showing me. Clint Kubiak, Gary Kubiak. Kubiak. There yeah, you so so uh, yeah, exactly. He worked under Kubiak as well. Um, so I think they're bringing him more as a guy that's also going to have a lot of play into how this offense is ran. Chris Morgan, offensive line coach. Now, listen, I think Juan Castillo was actually a pretty good offensive line coach. I don't, I, even though the offensive line wasn't that great, uh, he had he was a much more notable name than someone like Chris Morgan coming in. Um, That being said, Chris Morgan did have some really good offensive lines when he was with the Falcons and more importantly, uh, worked under Kyle Shanahan. And that's a big reason why a lot of people forget that on a good offense, not like Matt Nagy's offense, all these position groups are supposed to work in harmony and be on the same page. So the offensive line that you call for this scheme is not going to be the same that you call they called for, you know, a... Andy Reid, West Coast offense, uh, spread system like what Matt Nagy was attempting to run. He, I, it's barely, uh, I, I struggle more to call that the Matt Nagy offense there. Um, and, and so because of that, you need an offensive line coach that knows the understanding. He's also going to play a huge role, I'm sure, in the run game. And then tight ends coach Jim Dre. Um, I think that they did a good job rounding out the bottom of the staff, but definitely most excited with Getze and then the wide receiver coach and the quarterbacks coach. Yeah. And I like the, what you brought up too about um, Morgan and the offensive line coach. I, I do think that it's going to be an improvement in some ways. Cause I think that, you know, Juan Castillo, yeah, definitely a regarded name um, and, and, you know, has improved a lot of offensive lines a lot of places you know even um harry highstead before um yeah it was both of those are very notable offensive line coaches and yet both of them struggled and i think one thing that morgan's gonna bring is just a little bit more active offensive line play um mm-hmm. you know when's the last time that you saw a bell like a bears guard like really pull well or even a center, yeah. you know, pull you and, and, you and trap and and do all these different things along the offensive lines that create real holes um, that are going to allow the running game to 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 just really work at its best and be the most efficient and actually get some real productivity out of it. Um, so I'm re- I'm hoping that you know, like you said, that experience in the Shanahan system is going to bring uh, something that resembles a little bit more about what they got going on out there on the West Coast. Yeah, young Kyle Long was the last time we saw that there. Yeah, and maybe a little bit early Cody Whitehair. I th- I'm been a little bit critical with C- Cody Whitehair. So also, <clears throat> defense coordinator. We also found out this week, Alan Williams. Um, I think that this is a good hire in the sense that he knows Ibrafus' scheme, and that's I think the 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 main reason why he got the job. Um, I think Ibrafus does want to run his scheme, even though he's going to be the head coach and he's going to have a lot of hands off the defense as well. Um, I think that Alan Williams, the the one concern there is when he was with the Vikings, he had a bad defense. But that being said, it's kind of like when Leslie Frazier um, was the own defense coordinator with like the Bengals where uh, there wasn't a lot of talent on that Vikings team. And then also on top of that, like now that Leslie Frazier is under a defensive head coach, he has someone he can lean on. So really he just needs to call plays. Same thing with Alan Williams. He's really just going to need to play, call plays. He's not going to be, you know, the details guy. He's not going to be running the whole operation there. Yeah. I think there's a couple of few just like, I don't know if it's like hesitation is the word, but you know, things to be worried about with Williams. But I, I do think that he has at least the right demeanor. Um, and I think when you're kind of looking at Ibrafus's right hand guy, like this is him, <laughs> mm-hmm. like you said, yeah. he was mainly brought in to come out here and execute Ibrafus's scheme. And he certainly wants a continuation of what's brought him success um, in Indianapolis. So I think that's mainly um, why he was brought in and he's a firm believer. He's bought into what Matt Eberflus, um, you know, the, the whole hit system. He talked about that in the beginning of his press conference. Um, so I think it's pretty clear that at least there's some alignment on vision um, on the defensive side of the ball. And I think that's what really mattered for, 
for Eberflus. Definitely. And then two other coaches join Eberflus's uh, defensive side of the ball, or I guess Williams' defensive side of the ball uh, from Indy. That's James Rowe at cornerbacks coach and Dave Borgosi. Uh, I linebackers coach both these guys did a fantastic job in Indy so I think that we're in good hands there and then two other guys defensive line Travis Smith um, who was an assistant with the Raiders since they had Khalil Mack and I think the big reason why he got the job is probably a recommendation from Rod Marinelli who stepped who I think probably was going to end up coming over here but he ended up retiring from the NFL um, that's kind of what Ian Rappaport put out is that, Hey, he was considering coaching again this year, but decided to step down. Uh, just do, I mean, he's 72 at this point. I think he, uh, and he's had some success in the NFL, uh, notable success. Um, so I think that he was going to, he probably got the recommendation. He probably recommended Travis Smith to Iberflus and that's how he landed here. And then Andre Curtis, who comes over from the Seahawks, who did a really good job there as well. I mean, obviously Quadre Diggs, who was, uh, not considered all that great when he was with the Lions. Had a career, had a career year uh, with the uh, Seahawks. Where, uh, the Seahawks. Excuse me, this year. And then on top of that, he's also a free agent looking for a payday. Kind of wonder what he's going to get on the free agent market. Maybe he reunites with Curtis. Uh, we need a strong safety, anyways. But uh, we'll see, I guess. Yeah, and I think overall, I think as far as the positional coaches go. Um, you know, we did certainly see the carryover and Borgonzi, I think is good pickup. Um, and, and there's going to be, you know, the transition in the four three, I think is definitely notable. I think they brought in some good staff that's going to make the change, um, work, but I think it's going to be interesting to see, you know, I, I'm maybe not a hundred percent sold on it. You know, I'm just a, a three, four, I think the three, four sometimes just works a little bit better and Mm -hmm. as far as the tampa 2 goes i mean not not over the moon about that but i think really where it comes in where this whole kind of foundation and Ibraflus's defense um and and it'll be williams defense uh in the case of his position um i I think that it's built you know and they use the tampa 2 because i think it is they do so much breaking down as far as the whole you know the efficiency you know how much players are working and just going into the football no matter what on every play. Um, so I, I think that's ultimately, I think the foundations and the principles of this defense are going to be built on are fairly clear. Um, and I just, maybe I, I'm just waiting to see the execution of it <laughs> really. Yeah. For, yeah, for sure. And I actually really liked Alan Williams in the press conference. I thought he did a good job there as well. Um, I didn't pay as much attention to it because our defense is good and our yeah, offense has been awful. So I cared a little bit more about Getze and obviously having the young quarterback. Um, and I know that Ibra Flus is going to put together a good scheme for us. Um, I remember watching him absolutely wreck the Bears with the Colts and then watching some of the Colts defenses that year. Um, really incredible. And they didn't have anywhere near the edge rushing talent that the Chicago Bears have on this roster, uh, which I think is something that Alan Williams kind of alluded to almost um so you know i i I think that it's uh i think that ultimately the staff is pretty good i'm a little more confident on the offense side of the ball truthfully though as far as like coordinators go i know i think that's that's fair you know and he may not have had the edge rushing talent but he had deforest buckner i mean and um why i always blank on leonard um on their middle oh, linebacker, but yeah, I'm Darius Leonard. Yeah, Darius Leonard. I mean, of course, yep. he's notable, uh, but those are really two the the two biggest names that they had. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So ultimately, I I feel pretty good. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention uh, before we move on, because this episode is going to be uh, focused primarily around previewing this off season and the potential moves we can do. Um, I, I saw an interesting take somewhere. I can't remember where, but someone mentioned the fact that because the NFL is swinging so heavily in the, in, in the, uh, side of offensive head coaches that soon we might actually see a benefit of defensive head coaches. Cause I mean, this is crazy to think about. Cause I feel like even just like five years ago, maybe like even like 10 years ago, it was like mostly defensive coaches in the NFL. Mostly head coaches were defensive head coaches. Now, I I counted it today. There's eight defensive coaches in the AFC and only three in the NFC. So only about a third of the league has defensive head coaches. And, you know, a lot of those guys are like Bill Belichick. 
um, and uh, John Harbaugh and Pete Carroll, who, you know, are, are very obviously notable names, but not don't really specialize in that. And the reason why the, the person I'm referring to said this, because it's going to be, it's going it, to, it's pretty difficult to build a really good offensive supporting staff if you're not an elite offensive mind. So essentially, if you're not the Sean McVay's of the world or, you know, uh, the Kyle Shanahan's of the world, you struggle to get guys below you because they want to find their own spot where they can kind of take over a, a bigger role. So if you're not the mentor or like an Andy Reid mentor type, you kind of want to shift more towards a defensive staff where you can actually run your own show and, and decide your own fate rather than uh, actually having that. So I thought that was really interesting and it could be a benefit for the Bears going forward.